All right, welcome back to Adobe Camera Raw. And if you're wondering why we're taking a look at Adobe Camera Raw today, which is a little bit unusual for this channel, it's because we have a new update. And we don't just have a new update, we have a major update. So if you have paid attention to Adobe Lightroom Classic, you will know they've added a new masking feature. And because Adobe Lightroom Classic's develop module and Adobe Camera Raw are the exact same program, we have that new feature inside of this program. So today I'm gonna to show you two things that are new inside of Adobe Camera Raw. One is gonna be done first, it's really quick. It's just a new option that we have. And then I'm gonna dive in and show you the new masking feature, which features artificial intelligent selections inside of the program. All right, the first one is really easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slide over here to these two circles, and this is our presets. Notice presets. Key is Shift P. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And basically, the new addition is that we have new presets. We're not gonna go over the new presets, but let's just say you wanted to see the new presets. You can just open one up, hover over them, and you will see what the new presets look like just go ahead back up here and click on the editing program. Now this first adjustment, and I've just randomly picked these images, so I have not tested them out, so I don't know how they're gonna work. I have used the new masking feature inside of Lightroom and it works excellently. What is this new masking feature? Well, first of all, it's located right up here by this little circle where the brush used to be there isn't a adjustment brush on this menu anymore. That's because it has been replaced with the masking feature. Now the brush is still available, it is still the letter K. The way you're gonna get to it is either you can click and hold and bring up the options. The other way to bring up the new masking feature is to simply just come over here and click on that. When it comes up, you're gonna get these options. One is create new mask up here at the top, and then we have select subject and select sky. These are our artificial intelligence selections method. These were stolen from Photoshop. They work excellently in the program, I can tell you. We once again have the old brush. We have linear gradient still, radial gradient, and we have selection by color range and luminance range, everything right in here. So all these different ways in which you can make a selection, because look, Sometimes one selection method works a whole lot better than another, so we have all these. The first one we're gonna do is select subject. All we need to do is click on it and automatically make a selection. Now I have this changed. By default, you're gonna see the selection in this overlay and it's most likely gonna be red. I have switched that just to show people that it could be a different color. So this is the color overlay method. What we see in the overlay is the selection. You can see it messed up here. It needs to add here, add here, and then it would be a pretty nice selection. So just because it makes a selection, and most of the time I will tell you it makes almost a perfect selection, but we have a lot of values here that are bleeding in from one area to another, so it looks like it missed them, but that's no big deal because we can add or subtract to the selection. Now the way the selection is made is by using a mask. So we can see the mask up here. And what I'll do is I'll switch to the mask mode, which is white on black. In Photoshop, we use mask for adjustment layers. White shows the adjustment, black hides the adjustment. In a selective adjustment, the area that you apply white to, it's going to show your adjustment. Now your adjustment is just whatever you dial in over here. It can also be a preset as well. Black, it's gonna hide it. You can also use gray, so if you use 50% gray, it would show 50% of the adjustment. So you can see right here, it's done something like that where it hasn't made a perfect selection. If we wanted to add or subtract to a selection, and I'll go back out to the main window so we can see this, 
we're gonna switch back to color overlay. Actually, I'll just show you the different overlay methods. We've got color overlay. These are all just different ways to show you the selection. They all do the same thing, they just look different. All right, so we've got color on black and white in the background, image on black and white, image on black, image on white, and the black and white, which is basically we're viewing this mask up here. And we'll just go back to color overlay. If we want to add to the mask, we're gonna come up here to this button where it says add to mask, click that. And then you're gonna make a selection by the method that you want to use to add. And we could use any of these, but in this case, I wanna use the brush because I want to do this manually. So I'll click brush. I will adjust my brush size and then I can go over here and I can add to this selection by applying this. So I'm gonna move my flow up. So I do this at 100%. And we'll make this a little bit smaller. Now look, I'm not gonna sit in here for these tutorials to make perfect selections. It's not the point. We just wanna kinda of go in here and show you how they work. Need to get this little area. Now, I also want to subtract because I wanna remove this area over here. So I'm gonna come and hit subtract. Use the brush, the same method, and paint that out. And then we have our selection. Now, you'll notice, I'll move it down here so you can see it. When you use the subtract inside of your brush, there's a minus. And when you do the brush on, which I can select over here, and you come down, notice that brush is a plus because I was adding in that brush and I was subtracting in this brush. We can come over at any time. This is a non-destructive workflow. And if I need to go back because I missed something, I just need to click on the plus or the minus brush and then go in and I can edit my mask. Now, one suggestion would be when you're making your mask, make sure you don't have anything dialed in over here because if it's dialed in, it's gonna show you the adjustment. In the beginning, you just wanna see your mask to make sure it's perfect. So if you had an area like here, or there's a little bleed over and it's not perfect, that you have the ability to go into there and fix that mask. And then once you are ready, you come over here and dial in the adjustment. When you start dialing in the adjustment, the mask disappears and you see your adjustment. So I can come over here and I can lighten up this individual and make this how I want it to look. So this is how we use select subject inside of the new masking option. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one of this cityscape. And the reason I picked this is because we have tall buildings, short buildings. And look, to use the linear gradient, which would be the old way, I'm gonna click on linear gradient and then make a linear gradient, wouldn't work because well, why? It's not the best selection because where it gets the sky, it has a nice gradation, it's gonna ruin it on the buildings because it's gonna be applying in here and not here. Just something we don't want. So let's undo that. So let's go ahead and check out the new select sky. So now when I check select sky, you will notice. So you can see that Photoshop has made a great selection of our sky. I'm actually gonna check that by coming in here and going on black and white. So you can see it is picking up or adding a little bit over to that. It looks like it's using a bleed. Now remember, if I wanna paint that out, I can easily in here and add or subtract to a selection. But for right now, we'll just go back to the color overlay and now I can make those adjustments. So if I want to brighten up my sky, I can brighten it up. If I wanted to add some color, I could add some color to my sky. Anything that I would wanna do, I can make that adjustment. Now here's a really cool option. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up and create a new mask. So we're gonna click the plus create a new mask. Once again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit select sky. So we're gonna make the exact same selection. But in this case, I don't want to adjust the sky, but there's no like foreground selection. So what we're going to do is take this mask to and invert it. So you can see right over here, there's an invert button. I can click invert and it inverts the selection to the buildings. Now I can come over here to the buildings and make adjustments to the buildings, not the sky. Really cool new feature. So we use select sky and then an invert 
to make the opposite selection in the program. So if you ever need to select the buildings and not the sky, what you wanna do is select the sky, invert it, and then that should be your selection. Just like anything else, you can add or subtract to any selection or mask that you have in the program. Let's come on over here to this colorful image. And look, I picked this for a very specific reason. Obviously it's got colors in it. So now if we come over to this image, notice we've got select by color range. So I can click color range and it's gonna give us a new mask, but it hasn't applied it yet because I need to tell it what color to get. So let's go ahead and get orange. Now there's two ways to do this. One, I can make a point sample where I just bring this little eyedropper, I click and it's going to make a selection based on that point. And you can see it did a pretty good job. Let's look at that in the mask overlay view. So this is the area it picked. However, it did pick up this color and this color over here. So those are things that I don't want. So if I want to subtract from that, I can grab my brush at 100% and I can paint those out. Say, hey, no, no, no. I don't want you to make the selections right here. Now the second way you do this, I'll just come up here and reset this. So we remove that we're gonna click on color range and I'm gonna go ahead and color range. You can also, in some cases, like here we get a dark shadow red and a light shadow that you need to pick more than a point symbol. So you can click and drag and select an area. So if it has like different shades of blue, in the image, this is a good option to make a selection because it's gonna analyze the dark and that other area over there. You can come in here. I think black and white is a really easy way to check to see what your selection is. In this case, we know we don't want any of this area selected. So I would come in here and subtract from that selection and adjust that. You will also notice that in color range, we have the ability to refine. So I can come in here and refine that selection by sliding this slider. If I go to the right, it's going to add to it. If I go to the left, it's going to subtract. So let's see what it would have done on the orange. If I click color range and then I click the orange, remember it's selected too much. I can come in here and I can change that till we get a more accurate selection. Now it didn't do a perfect job because this has some shadows. Just like I told you, sometimes you need to make a selection of a specific area. But overall color selection does work very well. So let's go ahead and undo this. And we're gonna come back to this image. And this time I'm gonna make a selection using luminance value. And you're gonna see sometimes this can work and sometimes this can't work. But we'll go ahead and do it on this. We'll just clear this out so we're back to where we were. I'm gonna click on luminance range and I'm gonna add a new mask. And in this case, I'm just gonna pick an area like that. And remember, it's doing it on brightness, not color. Notice these brightness values over here are similar to this, but this is a different brightness value than over here. You can add and subtract to this. And in this case, we have a little bit different type of luminance selection. The selector is picking an area in between this right here. So this is our area that we're selecting. We can slide this slider so it picks a different area and makes a different selection. We can also make it narrower or wider, and we can do it on either side of that. So you do have a lot of control over the area that you would select. So if I went into this image and I wanted to select just his shirt, I could come and make a new mask or reset that and I'll make a luminance range selector. I could select his shirt, picking up all this area. I can adjust this to change it. But in this case, it's picking up this area, this area, this area, this area. This wouldn't be the ideal mask situation like this. But it is an option, and every once in a while, selecting by luminance range can be very helpful. The last thing is I'm just gonna quickly cover the other selections. For those of you who are new and maybe never have seen linear gradient and radial gradient, radial gradient we'll use here. You're gonna come over here, 
you're going to select radial gradient. In this case, I'm gonna switch it back to color overlay so we can see. And you're gonna draw a radial gradient and you can control how this looks. You can also rotate it and then move it. And so now I've created like an area that I wanna adjust. And then when I come in here, I can make that adjustment by using this radial gradient. So that is one option. You can come and click pick on this image. I want to use that linear gradient. And let's say I wanted to lighten or darken an area. So I can come in here and select it like that. Remember the mask is the area that we're gonna be adjusting. Can slide this over. And now when I make that adjustment, it's using a linear gradient to affect this area, but not this area. Well, that is how you use the new masking tool inside of Adobe Camera Raw. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and don't forget to subscribe.